For many people, the very name Charleston conjures up images of antebellum plantations with huge homes and beautiful gardens. These places are found along the Ashley River northwest of downtown, all made possible by the rice that was first cultivated here in the early days of the colony. Rice made South Carolina. A lot of people talk about cotton, cotton being king, but before cotton was king, rice was king in South Carolina, especially in the low country. Rice provided the wealth that built great gardens like Middleton Place. Uh, without rice, uh, the, the leisure class would not have been able uh, to spend time uh, contemplating landscapes like this. We'll visit three famous Ashley River plantations. The first, Drayton Hall, was founded in the 1730s and is owned by the National Trust for Historic Preservation. The house, which has never been wired for electricity and has no running water, is more historical tapestry than time capsule, offering an unvarnished, unaltered glimpse into the lives of an elite Charleston rice planting family. Because Drayton Hall has not been restored to a particular period, you'll see changes to the house over time. You'll see these changes over time that tell the story of how people of lives change, how the, how the economy of this plantation uh, and of the low country in Charleston fluctuated over time and our cultural tastes evolved all in one little postage stamp here at Drayton Hall. This exquisite home was meant to be entered from the Ashley River and is full of exquisite architectural details, many tracing their influence directly to the Italian Renaissance architect Andrea Palladio and his famous Four Books of Architecture. Well, I think a, a, a visit to Drayton Hall serves as an excellent introduction to Palladian architecture. You hear a lot about that in Charleston and also through the, throughout the American South. And this design that you see on, the, on, the, on this facade of Drayton Hall is without precedent in England. Inside the house, you'll see a woodwork very carefully carved and you'll see motifs executed in wood and you'll see those uh, motifs executed in plaster in the original uh, ceiling of Drayton Hall that dates to the 1740s. At nearby Middleton Place, which dates from the same period as Drayton Hall, the focus is on the incredible landscape design, which is truly one of a kind. What's here at Middleton Place is an 18th century landscape that has essentially been left alone. Um, it's a pleasure garden. It was a, it was a garden that was meant to be creative and, and excite the mind and, and be a, a pleasurable place to, to, to spend an afternoon. Here, visitors may stroll more than 100 acres of beautifully sculpted gardens and grounds, including two lakes that must be seen from above to be truly appreciated. Down below are these two butterfly lakes that were, that were dug out in the shape of butterfly wings and the, the, the earth from those uh, ponds was used to form terraces. And that's a feature that everyone recognizes when they come to Middleton Place. Union soldiers destroyed the main plantation house when they passed through in 1865, but the remaining south flanker is definitely worth a visit, if for no other reason than the marvelous things contained inside. Silver, furniture, paintings, and countless other heirlooms from the people who lived here. The House Museum is filled with Middleton family objects. It's uh, very unusual for, an, for a home, for a house museum, to have such a high percentage of original family objects. Almost everything you see inside the house belonged to the Middleton family. Much emphasis is placed on the working stable yards at Middleton Place. Here, costumed historians labor daily to recreate for visitors the wide variety of activities that took place to make the plantation work. It's important to have hands-on interactive activities, especially for children. They need to be engaged. They, they like to learn using multiple senses. So we have costumed interpreters that are not only demonstrating, but sometimes invite guests in uh, to help make a pot, for instance, or, uh, or, or help uh, plant a crop. Uh, it's, it's important to get people um, involved and, and feel hands-on. Magnolia Plantation and Gardens couldn't be more different from Drayton Hall in Middleton Place. Magnolia is one of America's last romantic style gardens. The romantic garden was man's attempt at recreating Eden, 
a place where man, God, and nature are in harmony together. You really only do two things in garden design. A formal garden controls nature, and a romantic garden cooperates with nature, and every other garden in the world falls somewhere on the scale between those two. Here, Reverend John Grimke Drayton, who inherited the property in the 1840s, worked to create a living paradise for his wife, who preferred living in faraway Philadelphia. After the Civil War, Drayton opened up the gardens to visitors, creating in the process one of America's first true tourist destinations. Today, Magnolia boasts the largest collection of camellias and azaleas and more varieties than any place else in the nation. Vibrant blossoms and beautiful bridges are reflected from lakes and ponds scattered throughout the property. And the gardens are planted so that no matter what time of year you visit, something will be in bloom. When you come out here, it is, you just forget about all your cares. Um, when you're walking through the gardens, the plethora of color here is just beautiful. Purples and pinks and whites and yellows, just everywhere. A tram shuttles visitors from one spot to another within the 120-acre gardens, and the house is open to visitors as well. Inside, you'll find rooms interpreting the life of Reverend Drayton, as well as the family life that continued here well into the late 20th century. Magnolia Plantation also offers a boat tour of the old flooded rice fields. And if there are children in your group, be sure to visit the petting zoo located just inside the main entrance. All three of the plantations we visited pay careful attention to the often overlooked influence of enslaved African Americans and their descendants, without whom none of the fine homes and lovely gardens would even have been possible. At Drayton Hall, visitors are invited to see a sacred burying place. That cemetery, we've learned, dates to the 1790s, making it the oldest documented African American cemetery in the nation still in use. At Middleton Place, you may step inside a freedman's cabin. Informational panels and exhibits tell the story of the origins and lives of the people who were brought here against their will centuries ago. And at Magnolia Plantation, there is a collection of cabins dating as far back as the 1850s. The cabins were lived in up until the 70s by people who were descendants of the original slaves that lived here. The interior of each cabin interprets a different period of African American life here, part of a special tour titled From Slavery to Freedom. 